गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अंजलि असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग ए आई एम एल एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग हैदराबाद टूडे वी विल गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द फीचर सिलेक्शन फर्स्ट वी विल रिकॉल द लास्ट क्लास इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन अबाउट द डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन ऑफ टॉक डाउन डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन ऑफ बॉटम अप सुपरवाइज डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन अनसुपरवाइज डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन सम टेक्निक्स ऑफ डेटा डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन एंड अबाउट फ्यूचर अबाउट फ्यूचर जनरेशन वॉट इज मीन बाई डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन इट इज द मिनिमाइजिंग ऑफ डेटा मिनिमाइजिंग ऑफ डेटा इन into the small amount small amount by dividing it dividing it into intervals that means you are dividing your data in the form of interval and you are giving that data some interval level some specific value then we have seen that discretization of top down you are moving from top to down that means you first you will divide that that data into the interval and after that data will be merge then discretization of bottom up you will start from the bottom and you will reach towards the uh, up that means you are go, go doing the process from bottom to up first you will do split that data into the interval and then you will merge the data now then we have seen that supervised discretization and unsupervised discretization when we we are talking about the supervised discretization then definitely it contain the some trained model it contain the uh, some trained model and it ha it has it has the idea of of classes it has the idea of classes or we can say that it has the or idea of output then unsupervised it is the untrained model it is untrained model and it has no any idea of in classes that means we can say y is equal to f of x y is independent uh, dependent variable and x is a independent variable and we can say here f of x that means x is a only input variable here we know about the input variable and in supervised discretization we have the idea of input and output also but in unsupervised discretization we have no any idea about output when our, our output will change according to our conditions then we have seen that some techniques of data discretization uh, first was histogram analysis histogram analysis that means we you are we are keeping the data in the form of graph you are keeping the data in the form of graph then in binning you are keeping the data in the form of bins different bins then cluster analysis you are keeping the data in the form of groups uh, in the cluster analysis even you are searching for similar values if there are some similar values then definitely it will contain the group and that data will store in the form of group then correlation analysis in correlation analysis we have seen that the relation be, relation between the two or more variables for example we can say uh, y is equal to f of x that means y is totally depend on x uh, uh, y is totally depend on x if when we will give the input value after that we will get the output that means there is a relation between the y and x and this correlation analysis has three types positive correlation negative correlation and no correlation in positive correlation your variables are moving towards same direction if one value will increase then another value automatically increase then negative correlation in in negative correlation all attributes will move up in opposite direction that means if one value will decrease another value will automatically increase 
and in no correlation if there are number of variables and they are not affecting each other then it is the correlation uh, no correlation analysis now decision tree in decision tree analysis you are finding the some base to values and that base values are uh, we can represent in the form of tree that means every decision is depending on your data then concept hierarchy for nominal data concept hierarchy for nominal data uh, here you are uh, you are converting high level value into the low level data high level value into low level data then feature generation in feature generate uh, feature generation we are generating the some features which are very useful for us that means we can say that from original attributes we are generating new new attributes this is the feature generation now we will start the feature selection there are some contents first introduction then benefits of feature selection then why should we do feature selection then filter method and wrapper method first we will see the introduction feature selection is the process of isolating the most consistent non redundant and relevant features which are used in the model construction that means in feature selection we have to select those attributes we have to select uh, those uh, features which are very essential for our model construction that means we will select the consistent which features which are non redundant and which are only relevant features then automatically when we are using the feature selection it will reduce the size of data set it will reduce the size of data set and sometimes it can increase also that means we can say when we are selecting the features it will reduce the size of data set and even it can show the variety of data set continue to grow they when we features a uh, feature selection we are using it can use in the form of we, we can use in the form of various approach we can use in the form different different way in the different systematic way even feature selection can be used in the machine learning algorithm actually it is the process of it is the it is the part of the data pre processing which mostly considered time consuming part mostly considered as a time consuming part obviously when you have a amount a large amount of data or we can say large amount of variables large amount of attributes those all attributes we will not need we can select only those attributes which are very essential for our model construction the feature selection it is the main component of feature engineering and which is help to select the most important features to input in machine learning algorithm this technique this technique is employed to reduce the number of input variables that means feature selection is used to help reduce the number of input variables and we can eliminate the some redundant variable or some irrelevant features also here this is the diagram of feature selection you can see this is useful data and noise data that means we can see this is your original data you can say this is your original data and obviously we will no need of whole data we will need only useful data so what you will do you will 
uh, discard the noise data. You will discard the noise data and you will collect only useful data. That means you are selecting useful data and storing in the other part. This is the feature selection. Now, best example of feature selection, just consider that we have to solve this machine learning problem and we need to predict that how much cricket team will score in their first innings if they get a chance to bat first. So, there is a, some details of information. We will consider number of batsmen, the mobile number of each batsman, the number of ballers, name of the ground, size of the ground, batting average of all the batsmen, place of birth of each batsman, then the strike rate of each batsman, birth star of each batsman and number of centuries scored by each batsman. That means this is our information. This is our information. We can or we can say features which we have already collected. We can say this is our information or features which are already we have collected. But for predicting the runs, all these uh, all these things with no need. For predicting run, runs with no need of all these things. So what we will do? We will consider only some character, uh, some variables. We will consider some uh, some features. That means these data have to predict our required information that are called features and the information which we have to derive from the given data it is called a target variable we will derive the data from the given information so that is the target variable and all about the features and expected runs to be scored is the target variable these are all our features. These all are our features and expected runs to be scored is our target variable. So for predicting runs to be scored, all this information not important. But then what we will do? We will apply some techniques and we will find out some only important feature. So obviously, when we will uh, find out some for finding out for expected runs to be scored, then we will go through these one by one features. And for uh, obviously, when it's about the number of batsmen, then it is important. Mobile number is not important for predicting the score. The mobile number of each batsman is not important. Then number of bowlers is important. Number of the ground, uh, uh, size of the ground is important. Then batting average of all batsmen, yes, it is important. Place of birth of each batsman, it is not important. We what uh, we are predicting the score. So for predicting score, mobile number of each batsman, place of birth of each batsman is not important. Even birth star of each batsman also is not important. But remaining, remaining features are very important for us. Remaining features are very important for predicting the score of the team. That means what we have done, we have selected the some features which are important for predicting the score, for predicting the score of the team, for, uh, for predicting the score of the uh, score of the team and for predicting the score of the uh, batsman that means we need to select only those features from the given list of features that we think will most influence our prediction it is called the feature selection that means in feature selection we are selecting the only some features which are very important. But 
in feature generation we are generating the features for storing the storing our data now we will see the benefits of feature selection benefits of feature selection first one simpler models simpler models are easy to explain simpler model are easy to explain a model that is too complex and unexplainable is not valuable if we have selected only the important features then obviously your model will get very simple and it will very easy to explain but if it will contain so many attributes then it is with it will um it will be very complex and we cannot explain it properly then shorter training times a more precise subset of features this decreases the amount of time needed to train a model that means if you selected only some features then obviously your number of features will decrease and uh, your model will train very properly it will saves the time then variance reduction increase the precision of estimates that can be obtained for the given simulation then avoid the curse of dimensionality dimensionality cursed phenomena states that dimensionality and number of features increases dimensionality and number of features increases then volume of space increase so fast available data also become limited and we will apply the pca feature selection for reducing the dimension then reduces the overfitting if you get the overfitting problem then here it will help to reduce the overfitting problem also less redundant data means less opportunity which will make decisions based on the noise then improves accuracy less misleading data means modeling accuracy improves actually feature selection technique will help to improve the accuracy of a data model then reduces the training time less data means algorithm train the faster your algorithm get faster by using by reducing the training time by reduce uh, by selecting the some features your algorithm can train the faster now why should we do feature selection using feature selection we can remove the some irrelevant data some noising data that means when you are remo removing the irrelevant data then it should not be affect on the output of our model it should not change the output of model if we try to predict the price of house in the spain using the variables which include the weather conditions in china these variables will probably not be very useful totally opposite conditions are there so they are not affecting each other these kind of irrelevant feature can actually can decrease the performance of your model automatically that's why we are removing the irrelevant feature from our uh, our data our model and we will see that for it should not be affect on your output then less features usually means faster training models if for you are using the parametric model then obviously there are uh, there are best example which were linear and logistic regression it means there are less weights to calculate in parametric models we have seen that there are two there are some variables which are very important x is a independent variable and y is a dependent variable and w and b are the coefficient regression coefficient regression that means this example we have seen that in the parametric model 
and when we are talking about the parametric model random forest of forest of decision trees there are less features to evaluate at each split that means we are using the splitting in this technique we are using the decision tree in decision tree we are splitting the data in the form of different different intervals and then we are searching for the best things and when these models we put into for the production these fear less features means less work for the team building the application which will use by the model and the huge feature selection can reduce the integration time it can reduce the integration time also and it can keep and these methods always advise for removing the noise data for removing the extra attributes and when we keep most important features discarding the ones that are feature selection methods advise to remove and our model becomes simpler and easier to understand if you will not reduce or remove the unwanted data unwanted attribute then your model will get very complex and it should it will very difficult to understand it so for after removing it will very easy for us to understand our model and it will get very simple obviously if for example if you have a 200 features and you selected 25 features that means when you you are working with 200 features then here should be some error should occur and this model should be very complex but when you are working with 25 more or uh, 25 attributes or 25 features then it will get very simple for you it will get very easy for you and it is very understandable for you once the application has been finished and being used periodically then some features is lot easy easier for debugging some features will get lot uh, get uh, get easier for debugging in case of normal abnormal behavior than model with a lot of features now the feature selection contain some methods feature selection contain some methods which are filter method and wrapper method first one is filter method the process of choosing it is the process of choosing a smaller part of your data set and using that the subset for analysis it is the process of selecting the smaller part to your data and you can use that data for the viewing or analysis purpose mostly in the filter method features we have to drop we have to drop the some features and we have to check the relation with the output whether they it is related or correlated to the output or not but we use the correlation to check if features are positively or negatively correlated that means when we are checking for the correlation between the variables then we have to check that whether it is positively correlated or negatively correlated and best examples of filter method is information gain chi square test or fisher scores filter methods mostly can be univariate or multivariate and when we we are talking about the univariate an ordered like ranking list of features is established for informing the final selection of feature subset you can see that this is the filter method diagram here we are we have all features or collected features the optimal subset of features then we have are uh, converted into some subset of the features after that we are applying the 
algorithm and after applying the algorithm we are getting the some outputs that means it is showing some output it will measure the performance of your algorithm when we are to, we will talk about the multivariate then evaluate it will evaluate the relevance of the features and it will identify some redundant and irrelevant features in in this method generally features are filtered based on the general characteristics of the data such as correlation with the dependent variable and it is it is performed without any predictive model here we are not predicting any model it's it is fast and better approach when the number of features are used and it will it uh, it will avoid the overfitting problem it will avoid the overfitting problem now we can see that this is the table which is showing the survey data and survey data here we have some attributes some features like id age gender preferred cola coca cola diet code coke zero pepsi diet pepsi and pepsi max we have we have these features that means the table shows that some rows of the data set from survey about the people's preferred cola that survey contains some demographic information some people uh, about the respondent and it, some uh, people are preferred cola and uh, some rating which for each of six varieties of cola here you can see that before filtering before applying the filtering technique all data are collected in the form of table and then after applying the technique after up, applying the uh, filtering here we have searched for the only we have filtered the data for only males darker color shows that analysis and rows remaining uh, rows are excluded that means here you can say we searched for we filtered the data only for the males you can see ID two nine eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen are the male which prefer the some cola, and I uh, computed the some results by using the by highlighting the rows with IDs and by using some rating Coca Cola among the males which uh, which I find if I uh, found out the some average by using these rates. by using these rates and i got the result 4.5 i got the average 4.5 now we will see the chai square test in chai square test mostly it will first uh, it will find the difference between the observed and expected data it is the statistical procedure chai square test is the statistical procedure which is used to determine the difference between observed value and expected value this test used to determine whether it correlated to the categorical variables in our data and it will help to find out the difference between categorical variables is due to chance or relationship between the variables now there is a formula x square equal to summation of observed value minus expected value square divided by expected value here c denoted degrees of freedom o denoted observed value and e denoted expected value i already told that chi square will explain the difference between the observed and expected value that means first we have to observe whatever data we have we have to observe and from that data we have to expect the some data we have to expect the some outputs and we have to find out the result of result of between them observed data and expected data predicting data the degrees of freedom 
in statistical uh, calculation mostly represent the number of variables that can vary in a calculation and it can be calculated by ensuring the chi square test statistically valid these tests are mostly compare observed data with observed data with the data that would be expected to be obtained and obtained if a particular hypothesis were only true if it is false it will not it is we can't expect the value but if the hypothesis were true then definitely we have to find out we can expect the some values and observed values are those you gather yourself and expected values are the frequencies which we are expecting which based on the null hypothesis now we will see the wrapper method in filter method we filter the data we filter the data and we predict the uh, we in chi square data we predict the some outputs we find out the difference between the some observed data and expected value but in wrapper method we have seen that we will first split that data and then we will train a model that means if you have a data then that data you have to split into the subset and then that subset you have to train that means on the output of the model we can add and we can subtract the features and after that we will train the model mostly first it will form the subset by using the greedy approach and it will evaluate the accuracy related to the some features we can say the best examples are forward selection and backward elimination elimination in wrapper methodology we will consider the selection of features set collection of uh, selection of features which we can combine the data uh, which are different different combinations which are prepared evaluated and compared to other combinations here we will consider the predictive model mostly when we will use the wrapper method we will consider the predictive model and it will use to evaluate combination of features and it will assign the model performance performance mostly depends on the classifier performance of wrapper method will depend on the classifier and these features are selected on the based of the result of the classifier and wrapper methods is more expensive than the filter method but it is it will give the accurate result as compared to filter method most of the time filter method uh, fail but wrapper method will give the accurate result and for we, uh, there are some examples recursive feature elimination sequential feature se uh, selection algorithm then genetic algorithms are the best example of wrapper method now we will see the forward selection forward selection it's the type of step wise regression which begins with empty model and adds in variable one by one each each model each step you have to add one variable and that variable will give the single best improvement to your model that means you are picking one variable and putting that into the your model that means we can see the step by selection first it will begin begin with model that no contain variables that means your model should be null here your model should be null then you have to start the you have to start adding the significant variable most significant variables most important variables you have to add into the model and until the pre specified stopping rule is reached 
I or until all the variables under the consideration are included the models. That means we have to include the all the data. We have to include all data into the model. But first we will include the best or we can say most significant variables in our model and then we will see irrelevant uh, we will add the irrelevant model we are not removing here any variable we are keeping the all data but we are focusing on the best variable best features and we are focusing on the uh, re relevant features we, there is an example we have used here five variables first one see here this bag is containing five variables x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. Now, our model, initially our model is empty. It is not containing any variable. It is not containing any value. So, it starts with model with no variable. This is our null model. Now, after that, we will find out some best variable most significant variable i here i got the x2 is more most significant variable so what i will do i will pick that variable and i will keep into the model x2 is most variable so more uh, now our model is containing one variable and that means we add the most significant variable into our model now i i found that the model x5 variable x5 is most significant variable so i picked up and i put that variable in the model now my model is with two variables my model is two variable that means keep adding the most significant variable until reaching the stopping rule or running out of the variables after that i got the x3 is the most significant variable so i will put here x3 after x3, I got x4 is the most significant. Then I will keep here x4 and then x1. That means on this tape, I have to stop here. I can't do anything. Now we have added all the variables into our model. But x2 and x5 are most significant variables. And mostly here we will focus on for a most significant variable. And another variables we can avoid. This is the forward selection. Selection. Now we will see backward elimination. Backward elimination is feature selection technique while building a machine learning model. It it is used to remove those features that do not do not have significant effect on the dependent variable or we can, we can say prediction of the output. That means our features, we have to remove those features which are not most significant. What, there are some steps we have to follow. First begins, then and until. First, you have to begin with the full model. You have to begin with the full model, then you have to search for least significant variables and you have to repeat this process till pre-specified stopping rule is reached. That means until no variable is left in the model. Now, there is an example. We, are start, we will start with the full model. That full model contains all variables. Here we can see that x1 is a more x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. Now we will pick up here from here which are least significant variables. I found that now first you your model is containing all five variables, but now I will remove the one by one. I will remove the least significant variable and I will keep that variable into that bag. I found that x4 is least significant variable and I kept here in the bag. Now again after that I found that x1 is a least significant variable then I will keep that in the 
back. Take means I am removing the least significance variable until reaching the stopping rule or running out of the variables. This is the best example of backward elimination. We can see there is a best uh, example, best difference of the uh, feature generation and feature selection. Here, this is the feature generation and this is feature selection. In feature generation, we are generating the features which are most useful for us. That means our features, our new gen, uh, new features are depend on our data, availability of the data. And uh, this feature is generated because of this and this feature is generated because of this. That means I am generating here new features from the old features. And in feature selection, I will select only those features which are, which I have a need. So, feature generation, it is converting raw data into the another data type which are, which will algorithm work and it will create the new features. And in feature selection, in feature selection, we will select only some values, some features from the feature rule which will use to use to simplify, regularize or shortening the training time and we will keep the data or subset of the original values. This is all about the feature selection. That means there are some techniques we have seen features the selection of filter methods and wrapper method. In filter method we filtered the sum data and in wrapper method we use the subset of the data. Now, next portion we will see in the next class. There are some references which can which you can use. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.